morning, and welcome to your daily Farm and Home Show, brought to you by the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. And now, here's your host. Good morning, and welcome back to the Farm and Home Show. I'm Kristen Hildebrand, filling in for Miss Joanna Coles. And we've been talking high tunnels all this week, and today for day three, we've got visiting with us again, Miss Rachel Rudolph. She's our Extension Vegetable Specialist with the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. Glad to have you back in the studio. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yes, so we talked a little bit about intro to high tunnels. Yep. We've already talked um, about getting Site started. Site selection, the benefits of high tunnels, yep, yes. and uh, soil testing, a little bit on soil testing. And today, we're going to be talking about mainly the construction, structures, and yep. designs. Design on features, yeah. Where do you get started? I mean, there's a lot of options out yeah, there. There are. There are countless options, countless dimensions. So, you know, what you, you might see for commercial operation, for those commercial vegetable growers who, who those are the people I work with, right? Uh -huh, right. Um, 30 by 72, so 30 feet wide, 72 feet long, or a 30 uh, foot wide, 96 foot long. Those are really common, especially for uh, commercial si size. Mm -hmm. But really a uh, 12 feet long, 40 foot wide is, is just fine for urban areas, people with you know a smaller, maybe a big backyard, right? right? Um, I know there's plenty of growers in Louisville that have that kind of that kind of size structure or something yeah. very similar. Yeah. Um, so really there's also Quonset, so that's that's up on the screen now, the Quonset style, that's the rounded top. Mm -hmm. So th these are just different design um, options or structural options. So the Quonset has the rounded top, right? Uh, that just looks like a cylinder on its side. Um, that one's pretty affordable. That's a pretty simple design. Um, and then there's the Gothic style. Mm -hmm. So the, the Gothic style is preferred in Kentucky because of our potential snow that we get in the winter, right? And so that pointed roof really uh, facilitates the, the snow coming off the, the structure. So it's not gonna cave in. Right. Right. Uh -huh. So. Yeah, and th that one's probably a little bit more um, expensive. It is, it's a little bit more expensive. Um, typically, you, you can do um, high tunnels, you can make them from PVC or wood, um, but metal is gonna be more expensive, but it's also gonna last longer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, that's a, a debate the growers need to have you know, with themselves and their, their economic possibilities, right? Um, mm -hmm. What they can afford. Yeah, so you showed us the Quonset and also the Gothic style. Uh, what about some of the glazing options for the high tunnel? What do you recommend? The covering? Yes, correct. Um, six mil uh, polyethylene cover is uh, generally what is used. That's that's the most common. Now, whether you do one, one layer or two layers, I was gonna ask. that's up to you. Um, two layers of the poly poly covering is going to um, add a little bit more protection from, you know, cold cold temperatures. So it's about seven degrees at night, mm -hmm. um, seven degrees extra protection. So during the day, the tunnel can get 30 degrees hotter than mm -hmm. what it is outside or more. Mm -hmm. um, but at night, it, it gets almost about the same. It doesn't retain heat very well, but that extra layer can add a little bit more protection. Correct. So a single layer is about four, four about, degrees. About four. Four, four degrees Fahrenheit. I yeah. know that that, and how long does that plastic usually last? Well, it depends on how good you are at putting it on, um, the weather, uh, you know, how, if you get a nice good stretch when you put it on and it's really tight, um, it can last a long time. Okay. If it's a little too loose when you put it on and the wind picks up, it will abuse that that polyethylene um, just will not hold up. Right. So um, four to five years is what we generally say. Certainly people can make it last longer. Mm -hmm. um, seven, eight years I've seen them on there. They do get a kind of a kind of a glazing on them dirty. where they're, they they yeah. look a little dirty. The maybe the sunlight's not passing through as well, mm -hmm. and that's just from weathering. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Now, um, what about the end walls? We probably need to think about a tractor, correct? Right, well, it again, it depends on the grower and the grower's needs. So those end walls, you could have a garage style, um, we showed before, a garage style door, um, or you know, kind of a barn door where it opens up like this, uh -huh. or a sliding door. Um, there's lots of options. Um, it really depends on what kind of equipment you need and what equipment you plan on using in the tunnel. Some people are, are gonna have pretty small equipment to hand tools, maybe. And so, you know, that giant door maybe is not that important, 
but it also facilitates more ventilation. So those tunnels can get really warm right. in the summer. Yeah. You're going to have the side walls up, end walls up, but you so you want a lot of air movement. Right, right. That's really key and important. So we've covered a lot, and we we're going to cover some more tomorrow, a new t tool. So we want to invite you back here tomorrow. Hope you have a great day. If you have questions about today's topic, please call the Warren County Extension Office at the number on your screen. Thanks for watching and have a great day.